Juga negara juga. Can you hear me? I think now it's working. Can anyone just confirm that they can hear my song? Okay. <clears throat> Today our lecture is about Sentinel. Good morning, everyone. Today our lecture is about Sentinel events, which is part of our um, preparation for Sabahi conditional accreditation. Uh, so Sentinel events, actually, it's uh, fully met, but just one part of it was uh, not met. That's why we did not receive the full score. It is because uh, we were not uh, an accredited authority previously, um, but, the, but now that we are uh, accredited authority, so we need to have a Sentinel event policy, which is uh, same as Sabahi standards and same as the R1. <clears throat> so I will, um, part of the implementation is to give you a, a short uh, orientation about this Sentinel event, although we have give, given this orientation many times before. Um, so let's have a quick look at what is Sentinel event, the policy of it, how we do the RCA and how we prepare the corrective action plans. To define sentinel event is a patient safety issue that is not primarily related to the natural course of patient's illness or underlying condition of a patient that reached the patient and resulted in death, permanent or severe temporary harm. Important thing to remember here that it's not a natural course of patient disease. Number two, it's not the underlying cause. Then sentinel event when it's, it becomes a death or it's a permanent or a severe temporary harm. What is severe temporary harm? Severe temporary harm is refers to a critical, potentially life-threatening harm lasting for a limited time, less than four months, with no permanent residual, but requires transfer to a higher level of care, monitoring for a prolonged period of time, like zero to six months. Transfer to a higher level of care for a life-threatening condition or additional major surgery procedure or treatment to resolve the condition. So whenever the complication happens and it lasts for more than four months, um, or needs an additional surgery or needs transfer to a higher center because of um, uh, from higher specialty management. So this will be a severe temporary harm. Now the root cause is an initiating cause of causal chain, which leads to an outcome or effect of interest. <clears throat> Whereas the root cause analysis is a structured retrospective analysis of an event or situation that aims to identify its true causes, system vulnerabilities, and the actions needed to eliminate them using a wide range of approaches, tools, techniques, and protocol. So the root cause analysis, it's actually a retrospective analysis where we try to find out different causes, connect them together to find out the actual cause. And also at the same time, we try to uh, manage these causes or try to resolve the issue and try that this thing never happens again. Corrective actions, it's identification and elimination of causes of a problem, thus preventing their recurrence. So this will be a corrective action. The policy states that all identified clear sentinel events, uh, remember that clear sentinel event, um, which match the MOI sentinel event uh, categories should be reported within 24 hours. So first thing is we need to report within first 24 hours. Second thing is the complicated sentinel events that need more decision with RCA committee should be reported within 48 hours. So we, if in case we are in doubt or we think that the sentinel event is not clear or it's a more complicated nature, then it will, we will take 48 more hours. <clears throat> we will take some support from external uh, peers we can uh, discuss within the hospital also. 
uh, mandatory reportable event similar to sentinel events but this does not cause a severe permanent uh, damage these event must be reported within the 24 hours now uh, things that were that we were practicing before is that we were uh, re reporting within 48 hours 24 hours to the r1 whereas 48 hours to the ministry of health portal but now this will be a new thing that for accredited hospitals sentinel events should be reported to sabahi uh, through Sabahi, Sabahi, there's an email that, that they have provided us, and this should be reported within the five days. <clears throat> now, the next thing, what will happen, that we will uh, start collecting the uh, evidences, and we will conduct some interviews. If we think that uh, need uh, some further studies, we can perform further study, or we can take an external peer review as well. But at the end, this RCA, or root cause analysis, uh, the lesson learned and the corrective action plan should be completed and submitted to the uh, quality and patient safety committee uh, team within the first within 20, 21 working days okay so the first thing is finish all these things within first 21 days the next thing is this rc report with central level reports and everything we should submit to the r1 within 30 working days okay so we collect everything finish everything 21 days submit to them within 30 days Important thing to remember for everyone, uh, because everyone is afraid that sentinel event is something uh, cause the blame. No, it's an opposite of blame. So RCA focuses primarily on the system and process and not on individual performance. But for also for uh, the leaders, Dr. Imam, an intentional unsafe act must be handled through administrative line of authority for appropriate disciplinary action. The, once a case definition is there, and once in the initial impact of um, the scenario is there and we identify that actually this happens because of a real negligence, then the, this will not be dealt as a sentinel unit. This will be dealt as a disciplinary action. Okay? R1 mandates to maintain a system for the disclosure of patients, events to patients and their families. Once there is a sentinel event, disclosure is must. Everyone must learn and uh, participate in this one. The organization should provide appropriate support. This is the main purpose. I believe the main purpose of Sentinel event and the root cause analysis is to provide support to the staff. Okay, Because people don't understand. People think that Sentinel event is happening, investigation is going on, I will be blamed, I will be caught, something will bad will happen. No, we are here. Our uh, team is here to support you. Everyone will be supporting you whenever you will come for the Sentinel event. What's our one? Uh, R1 is a group of hospitals under cluster one. We are R1s, cluster one, R1. Yeah. The medical director or his designee will report central events activity to the board. This board is inside the hospital. The RCA team, after receiving the case, will determine the professional conducts required a professional peer review or no. So this can happen as a second one. First, if in the initial case definition, you identify that uh, this is not the central event, but it, it's a negligence. So it will go to the administrative action. But during the central event, if you identify something, it will not go for this that part. It will go for the peer review. Peer review. Peer review. The disclosure. Yeah. Okay. So disclosure is the disclosure is not a personal problem. It's not a, pers a person's. Uh, uh, activity it's a group or a team activity okay so once a sentinel event has been discovered person will uh, whoever has discovered will inform a senior he will inform the quality report he will inform the medical director they will form a team then after finalizing that this is a sentinel event a small team is formed though those will disclose it to the patient and their family okay but disclosure is part of something that we all should learn how to disclose the sentinel event it's a team's job. It's not a person's job. How, how is it? I don't know if it's a way understand this. A disclosure policy, I will explain again. Okay, no problem. There is a there's a disclosure policy. I will tell you what is the systematic way of disclosing an event to the family. Okay. It is not applicable. What is not applicable? I think this sentence is not applicable. The disclosure? Uh, it's, it's applicable. It's applicable. Okay, the quality and patient safety department will disseminate the lessons learned. Um, of course, it will be of our responsibility. Once all the documentations and every investigation everything is completed, then the lessons learned 
and what are the corrective action plans, this will be disseminated to, throughout the hospital by the quality team. All the documentations or everything which is written will be secured within the quality department. But uh, everyone else, uh, all sorry, not everyone, everyone inside the hospital should maintain a confidentiality and the security. Okay, there's a list of Sentinel events, huge list, 21 events, uh, and it's keep on increasing. And there is on the other side, you can see the list of 23 mandatory reportable events. I will share this list with you. Um, let, let me just give one example that um, wrong side surgery, of course, if you perform a wrong side surgery straight away, it's a clear definition and class, it's a sentinel event. But if you will think about um, unintentional death or intravascular gas embolism or a retained instrument or sponge, uh, I, I, heard, I remember one, once a physician surgeon applied a artery, he did not forget it. He intentionally kept it there because of the bleeding going on, okay? But it was reported to us. We went back and we found out actually it was an intentional, it was a part of the surgery. So remember that there's a difference between the two things, okay? So there are many things. In mandatory reportable events like stillbirth, therapeutic abortion, there, there, this is a huge list, okay? I will send it, I will send the whole list to you, okay? I will send the group. Anyway, our purpose is to understand the procedure, the policy and the procedure here, and how we actually do the uh, root cause analysis. So immediately, once a central limit is discovered, someone will report it. Uh, the, he will report it to his senior. The senior will report, will collect it, categorize it, inform the quality department. Quality department, again, it will categorize it as a central event, inform the medical director. Uh, they will also, if it is fixed to the, if it, uh, it matches the central event definition, We'll start collecting the evidences and we close, we will secure the patient med uh, medical record by the medical record department, medical record department. And then uh, a verbal or a message will be conveyed to the three main leaders, the hospital director, medical director, and the nursing director, so that the process can be initiated. <clears throat> Immediately, a team is formed as well. Um, an initial report is prepared within the 24 hours. And in case unclear uh, case is there, we connect, we contact with the uh, R1 team and they will inform us, discuss with us, assign someone so that we will define it clearly. Then we'll submit to the MOH within 48 hours and Sabahi within the five days. Core team is immediately formed. Uh, a core team mainly consists of uh, the clinical leads, maybe an external expert as well, RCA consultant. <clears throat> um, this team is formed by the medical director, the quality director and the patient safety director or the risk manager. Then also another list is formed, which includes the list of the individuals involved, involved in the event. These lists are approved by the hospital director. Now here comes the actual part, um, information gathering, where um, actually the things happen in the quality department. Um, so one of us will visit the location and will try to obtain the first-hand knowledge about the workplace environment and all the facts, knowledge, and physical items related to the incidents. This include the documents, the medical reports. He also perform a short interview with the staff which are available there or which are, who are directly involved. Uh, this is not part of this interview. There is an interview which is on the site. The interview we will conduct of, uh, officially. Physical evidence, like the ward layout, different types of equipments, take the pictures, count, collect, uh, see what the checklist, et cetera. Information about the relevant conditions like quota, availability of trained staff, et cetera. Organize the information in a chronological uh, order, which is actually the part, which is actually the root cause analysis that we organize the information. So how I learned to perform the RCA. These are the different types of causes which are present when we reach to the to a scene. These, there are triangles, there are squares, there are circles, and there are some things which is not clear, look like a star. Okay, so we start gathering them and we start organizing them in a chronological manner. We can further organize them, okay? We can further organize them in a green, blue, yellow, and red area, but still we don't understand, we keep it outside our boxes. <clears throat> now, to further explain, we can define them, okay? That these things, some of these causes are related to patients, like these triangles. Some of these causes are related to the staff. Some of the causes are related to equipment. There can be more causes, okay? We can organize them further. Some of them have caused minimal damage. Some of them have caused why it's not clear? 
Okay, some of them are minimal, minor, some of them are high risk, and some of them are the catastrophic causes that may have led to that incidence. Still, uh, the things we don't understand, we keep them outside our boxes. Another way of uh, gathering the information and making them in a, uh, in a proper way is to, is to use a fishbone chart, okay? Here, the main causes are present in the boxes and the contributing factors or the minor causes are present in the lines. The head of the fish is the main cause, uh, which, which, will, which, is, which will become the root cause, okay? So maybe the first square is the patient's part. The second box is related to the environment. Third is related to the building. This box may be related to the, fish, uh, the equipments or the process itself, some policies. Maybe some, something is related to the external environment. But my favorite is to have a flow chart because most of the, um, most of the central events they, these are very well defined already. The patient comes to the hospital, gets an admission. We have a clear guideline or the pathway the how the patients will be managed. Okay, so we can organize them in our mind, in a, in a paper, in a proper way when we define the flow chart of that patient inside the hospital. Now, let's say some of the um, causes will be related to the diagnosis. Others will be related to the management. Inside the diagnosis, maybe some of the causes related to admissions or the management plans. Some of them may be related to the procedure, lab, and radiology. Some causes may be related to the procedure itself, the site. Okay, maybe it's a routine or invasive procedure or specialized procedure. Whereas some causes may be related to the diagnosis, assessment, management plan, consultation, or discharge. Okay, so here we segregate different causes at different levels. Here, in this whole flow chart, I find out that most critical problems are segregated around the invasive procedure. So I am focusing on one area. Something happened when an invasive procedure was performed. And this star area, now I am able to identify that these are the contributing factors. <clears throat> so what I will do, once I will finish gathering all the information, segregate, make a list of events, make a chronological, in a chronological order, identify what happened, where, how it happened, who was responsible, what are the deficiencies, what are the gaps, what are the defects, we will prepare a complete list of events in a proper chronological method. So we will, it will be easy for us to actually identify the root cause. So once we reach the root cause, the next step will be, uh, okay, if, uh, sorry, before the next step, if we are still not clear, we will conduct an interview with the staff who are involved to make it clear. So, so please remember that. Conducting the staff interview is not an investigation it, because some things are not clear within. We are not clear about things. Also. We want to hear what people were there and they actually witnessed it, okay? So that they can give us the first-hand information rather than I will imagine something. Why not I ask someone who was there actually, okay? So <clears throat> finally, we will prepare a corrective action plan. A corrective action plan consists of very important things, uh, the findings or the contributing fact and the contributing factors the corrective actions plans, corrective actions or the corrective action plan that we have prepared, who will be responsible for it, what will be the timeline, and what will be the status after a specific period of time. I will give you one example here. For example, I did the root cause analysis and I found out that there was a finding that patient refused for the treatment and the contributing factor was the MRP did not attend it and did not counsel the patient properly. So uh, what will be the corrective action? Should we go and start asking the patients, why did you refuse? No, we'll implement a patient family meeting so that, so that a proper process is inducted inside, inside our system, okay? Because we are looking into the system. We are not looking at the people. We are looking at the system. So the system, if the system is corrected properly, we will, in the future, it will not happen again. Who will be responsible for it? The nurses, the residents, no. It will be responsible for the responsibility of the head of the department because if they will initiate it, everyone will initiate it. It's not from down upwards, it's from upward downs, okay? And we'll give a suitable time. This can be done within one month, so we'll give it one month. Similarly, another thing, last one, procedural complications can happen and it's the most frequent cause. And it may be related to the physician's experience, something we started doing it and we found a complication which I never faced before. So I stumbled a little bit 
and I couldn't manage it. Okay, so the complication happened. So what is the root cause? Should I remove that consultant or surgeon from the surgery? No, we cannot remove them. Okay, we can rather advise them to have a proper training about it. Who will be responsible for it? This is not the responsibility of the head of the department. It will be responsibility of the human resource department, the medical directors, the hospital directors, because they have they have the authority to send the people for the for the training. And we will give it a larger time. We'll give them a six month period so that their training is complete. Meanwhile, they can keep on learning. This is how the correct action plans are done. The systems are corrected rather than correcting the, uh, rather than trying to blame the people or trying to change the people, okay? Okay, here it will not end. It will not end here. It will end, it will, there will be a compliance monitoring. Compliance monitoring, which is the mayor of success or which is the planned action element of performance, complicated words for you, but forget about it. If it is ESR, 100% compliance is mandatory. If it is non-ESR, 90% compliance is mandatory. How we do it? By implementing audits. How much time required? It is four months. Four months, we can we'll keep on reviewing it, okay? And the status will be shared by the quality department with the team involved, with the stakeholders and with the leadership and the R1. So at the end, in summary, sorry, all one. Um, always report the central events immediately upon discovery. Uh, evidence collection, interviews, RCA corrective action plans are not to blame, but to mitigate the harm and preventing the recurrence, okay? Disclosure of incidents is not by a person, it is by a team. Investigation teams are responsible for supporting the staff and implementing the corrective action plans. So whoever participates in the RCA, they are responsible for very important things, support the staff, do the corrective action plan. So if you are sitting in that side of the table, remember that you are being investigated, but this type of the uh, side of the table is here to support you. Okay, so never be afraid of your team. Thank you very much. Any questions? Anything? Yeah. 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 Yeah.